In this video, we will review how to utilize hex meshing in HyperMesh with three different methods. Let's start with hex meshing on a thin solid body. Thin solid hex meshing works by creating a mesh on the surface and then extruding through thickness. First, click on the thin solids icon in the 3D ribbon. We can create our first mesh by utilizing a batch process. This allows users to automate their meshing process where mesh refinement around certain features is taken care of with the parameter file. Additionally, criteria settings can be created to control element quality. It should be noted that the thin solid method will only work if the thickness is less than the length and width dimensions. Thin solid hex meshing can also be done manually, where users can specify element mesh size and number of layers. In our case, we'll specify a size of 0.25 inches and 5 layers. I can also key in the biasing method and intensity to control how the mesh gets mapped across my part. Our mesh gets created, and then through HyperMesh's element quality visualization, users can examine and see if created meshes are adequate. Thankfully, our mesh looks good. The second method to create hex meshes in HyperMesh is through the Mappable Solids option. In HyperMesh, users can visualize mappable bodies. In this case, the model we are working on is currently not mappable, and if we try to hex mesh this model, it will fail. We can overcome this issue through splitting the solids into smaller, mappable bodies. We can split the majority of this model by the interactive split plane option, which splits solids by a specified plane. In our case, the plane will pertain to existing surface faces. Once you split a solid, we can determine if the new shape is mappable by the mappable plot. A yellow color will indicate if a solid is mappable, and a red color will indicate that it's not mappable. The only solid body that cannot be mapped is the body with various sketch imprints on it. In this case, we can utilize the split by line feature, which will allow users to get rid of imprints on a solid. In our case, it will remove all the imprints on the shape and thus create the final mappable solid. Since all bodies are now mappable, we can create our hex mesh by clicking map and then specifying our mesh settings and creating our mesh. We can confirm our hex element type by going to the model browser and checking the elements. Our final option for hex meshing is the dragging method. To utilize this technique, the body must already be mappable. In our case, our solid is a mappable body. Our first step is to create a surface mesh on the face, and I'll specify a mesh size of 0.13 inches and specify tries and quads on the surface. I can then create the hex mesh option under the 3D ribbon and select the newly created surface mesh face as my source. I then click on the end face as the face to extrude to. Users have the ability to add guide curves to help in the extrusion process for more tricky shapes. This model did not require guide curves to create the hex mesh. After meshing completes, I can visualize how the elements translated from the origin to the finished surface. Everything looks great. HyperMesh's hex modeling capabilities gives users the flexibility to easily create hex meshes in a fraction of the time. To learn more about HyperMesh or other Altair products, go to www.trueinsight.io.